This is Twit. What are there any industries that are going to see a um, a, a benefit yes. from this? Yes. Mm, huge. Yeah. yeah. We've already started. So uh, those working in the area of so like within segments of AI, like computer vision, automation, as it relates to automated small delivery, like, so Neuro, um, Uber had a fairly successful pilot running of uh, autonomous delivery vehicles in Pittsburgh until at one point it was, uh, they were trapping people in wheelchairs out in the street because Nobody had trained the system to recognize wheelchair as an oh, object Lord. with human in it. Oh. So they had to. Uh, I was going to say for fun or what? No, just, no so, but, uh, but you don't have people outside. So, again, what would it take for X to be Y? What would it take to see a faster acceleration? We've got the conditions right now for that to happen. I'm also seeing an influx. I was already, but I'm certainly now seeing an influx in synthetic biology uh, investment. And, you know, um, if it's the case, if we can redefine biology as technology, which is a little controversial, but if we can think of ourselves as code uh, that can be program that it's programmable, which we can now. So synthetic think, biology. Do you think yeah. like Elizabeth Holmes is thinking, if I could only have held out? <laughs> well, I mean, so 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 it's kind of no joke though. I mean, Amazon was already working at home-based diagnostics uh, on all kinds of systems and services. Google and Apple are also working on um, diagnostic tests outside of a lab. We are seeing the problem that occurs when you've got too much consolidation with basically two labs, Quest and LabCorp in the United States. The rest of the system becomes brittle. Again, these become accelerating factors for greater investment in home-based diagnostics, home automation, uh, single data records linking all of this together, um, all of the machine learning and the deep learning ecosystem um, and the AI used for scientific discovery. I mean, these are things are all interlinked. So all of that is going to see a, an acceleration going forward. Um, see, so if you're I'm, somebody who's like, hey, I'm an engineer and I kind of have you know some interest in these areas, like that, those are good areas to be looking at right now. I am curious, though, on the automated car front and sort of on the automated drone front, yep. the big players, yes, they're pushing forward on this, but there does seem to be a sort of drying up of VC funding for the, you know, the the younger players who are trying to get to scale first. So it seems as though sort of a lot of startups are now really struggling for money. The, v, mm. the, the VC funding seems to have, to have cropped up. Do you think we're going to see... A sort of consolidation around the you know the first leaders, or are we going to see some some kind of you know spring of new ideas? Right. So nothing that I was just talking about is new. Um, it's what I'm describing is an accelerating factor that wasn't present before. Um, okay. And within the yeah, so so like synthetic biology has its roots like back in 1992, and a lot of the de the Uber in Pittsburgh using little delivery drones is like that's been around for a while. Um, mm -hmm. I think the problem is you've got a uh, you know the VC community and the private equity community tend to be chasing the shiny a lot, you know, um, and. I just envision them chasing the new shiny, which is uh, technology related to automating parts of the logistics in the supply chain. So things having to do with like private 5G infrastructure um, within manufacturing plants and factories, um, scraping and using metadata that comes from the collaborative robotics and the, the 5G systems. I see money like, potentially going in that direction, which has a feeder effect back to automated delivery vehicles. If, you know, so, so maybe we don't see like a ton of new neuro competitors or whatever. Um, and maybe some of that funding dries up, but the rest of the factors that lead into that ecosystem are moving forward. You wrote a book called the big nine. It's all about the big nine, IBM, Alibaba, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Tencent, Baidu and Apple. Which of these companies are going to see huge growth because of COVID-19? Yeah, so this is one of those cases where I really wish 
Um, so that that pragmatic scenario, the the there's the, the middle of the book has three scenarios: optimistic, neutral, and catastrophic. That neutral scenario is starting to take shape, um, which is a concern for me because it leads down a dystopian uh, superhighway. Um, what is the neutral? Know, what is the, what is what are this? signature uh, features of the neutral. Um, that's much just sort of more pragmatic. And pre-virus, I was studying, uh, again, like tech companies um, intersecting with health, which has been going on for a while. Uh, tech companies intersecting with farming and agriculture. Right. Um, in a lot of countries around the world, the government just stopped funding basic research, so somebody else had to step in. So I'm not against... Google or Apple or Amazon necessarily building out the future infrastructures of healthcare, but I think if they're going to, if we're going to rely on them to do that, and now we see an accelerating factor in the virus, we have to demand traceability, accountability, explainability, transparency. You know, like transparency, and that needs to be in place. Um, if not first, then while this is all happening.